Ladies and gents, my future millionaires, now although these days have been dark with diets consisting strictly of ramen noodles and job applications forwarded to McDonald's daily, things may not be gloom forever. The crypto markets work in cycles and this is the time when enormous opportunities are created. In this video, we'll be going over the best strategy in investing into the crypto markets right now. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear idea on how you can make money effectively through some of my top crypto picks for this year. Now, before we get started with today's video, if at any point you find value or you're just vibing, with the Jung Dynasty. Do me a favor, drop a like down below on this video and subscribe so I know this is the type of content that you guys want to see more of. Now, one more thing, because AdSense for my channel seems to be going lower every single day and my daily addiction to Chipotle will not cave in, we got a quick little message from a sponsor for today's video. Now, today's sponsor isn't just a random company. This is the same brand that frequently sponsors Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss's podcast. I'm honored to have them reach out to me and I'll let Gray Shirt Brian take it from here. So as you guys know, I'm all about finding easy ways to improve my health through habits to keep me at the top of my performance as an entrepreneur and an athlete. And this is why I'm so excited to share with you today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Now the new AG1 by Athletic Greens is made from the highest quality ingredients that offer 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole foods source nutrients in one convenient daily serving that's perfect for someone like me. As most of you guys already know, I'm on the go and I really can't afford to take too many days off. And the AG1 formula by Athletic Greens is your all-in-one green powder that supports immune health, gut health, energy, and recovery. AG1 is made in New Zealand in a TGA registered facility and is the gold standard for professional athletes who have to adhere to strict rules regarding supplementation. With this drink, you're gonna know exactly what you're putting in your body. And for every order of AG1, Athletic Greens even went ahead and committed to donating a portion of their proceeds to organizations all around the world in providing nutritious meals to children in need. You go to the link in the description now, you can get a year's supply of vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Now, with that being said, thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. And now back to the content. What are gonna be the top cryptos? What are the plays this year, Brian? And how are you navigating the fields? So before we get into those crypto picks, let me share with you my strategy on what I am doing right now. So while the crypto markets seem to be extra sensitive towards what the stock market's doing, central bank policies, and what the Fed intends to do, uh, now that we have a more precise date coming in the end of March for interest rates to start going up, I do wanna play the markets a bit more conservatively. Back when we were in that euphoric bull market, Market, my strategy was definitely different then compared to what it is now because I wanted to roll into those 10 to 100 X's and to go for those high risk, high reward plays just because I had an entire portfolio that was still very green. When things drop significantly, you want to reduce that risk. And I think it's better to have a cushion or a foundation in case we do see the market turning for the worst. Now, in order to do that, the first category of cryptos that I'm going to be deciding to invest more positions into is going to start with metaverse. The reason for this is just because we're getting more and more news from a lot of established companies about their plans in investing more money into the metaverse, just like what we heard from Tim Cook pointing at Apple's metaverse plans just seven hours ago today. Tim Cook got a question that says, how are you thinking about the metaverse opportunity and Apple's role in the market? And he explained it very well right here. He states, well, that's a big question, but we're a company in the business of innovation. So we're always exploring new and emerging technologies. And I, you've spoken at length about how this area is very interesting to us. Right now, we have over 14,000 AR kit apps in the app store, which provide incredible AR experiences for millions of people today. And so we see a lot of potential in this space and are investing accordingly. Literally before filming this video today, you guys may have also noticed within my last few videos at the bottom right of the screen, I'm a little logo set up and I've been trying to get a sticker for it, like some car stickers, give them out to close family and friends, just keep it super exclusive. And I didn't know the dimensions of it. So I pulled out my Apple iPhone and I forgot that there are tools like the AR ruler where I can literally see what is going on through the camera and make precise measurements. Now, although I had a physical measuring ruler, using the camera, using this type of technology really showed me two things. One, it is amazing. The amount of innovation that we're planning to see and the integrations that we're gonna have is so bullish to me in every way. In addition to that, we're seeing the technology going from even small things like a smartphone translating into much bigger opportunities. And I think that is gonna happen directly into the metaverse. On top of that, let's not forget Facebook who renamed 
renamed themselves Meta. And then the Oculus, which is one of the other companies that they own, recently renamed themselves from Oculus to MetaQuest. So a user had asked on Twitter, why? Why did you switch your name out from Oculus, which seems to have been better? And they stated, we moved away from the Oculus name and towards MetaQuest to better reflect who we are and our goal to help build the metaverse. We know our community will miss the Oculus name, but we are excited for the future and limitless VR possibilities. Now, I think it's safe to say that Facebook and Apple, two of the largest tech giants within our space, have been known to make some pretty good decisions. And when they're this confident in rebranding themselves and investing more money into a certain market, I think as investors, us following the whales is not going to be a bad decision at all. Taking a look at Google Trends, which started when Facebook did make the announcement to turn themselves into Meta, you'll notice that enormous pump we experienced before the start of the year. And right now, it looks like although the trend seems to be falling back a bit, I do expect Metaverse to have another astronomical pump some point this year. Now, between all these cryptos, Decentraland is definitely going to be your safest bet. I've still preferred to invest into Sandbox. And when we did see them slide down below $3, I think that was a strong buying opportunity there. If we have the charts load up and we pull it back to the one year, you'll notice the big mega pump that we had literally the same time when we experienced the Google trend of Metaverse going up in price as well. And Sandbox actually hit an all-time high of $8.40. Right now, about a third of where we were from the previous all-time high. But it looks like we are experiencing just a little bit of that bounce coming down from $2.68 all the way to where it's at right now at $3.44 today. It is very easy to invest into the higher caps, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I think there's nothing wrong in doing that, especially when the market sentiment is much lower, where altcoin floors can continue to drop. But I do believe having some type of diversity or a position of your portfolio, it could be 10, 15, 25% of it into metaverse. This will still pan out because I think there is still endless possibility. And I know Facebook and Apple, two of the large companies would agree with us there. Between all those cryptos, Sandbox would be my pick for this year to continue doubling down on. But if I were to look at any other cryptos, we did mention Alluvium. It is tough if I don't see actual gameplay, if I'm not getting real feedback and then I don't have clear roadmaps from a lot of these other gaming projects related to the metaverse, it is still higher risk to me at this point. And knowing that a lot of these AAA games are going to try to migrate into the metaverse as well, I think it's going to get competitive fast. And I think the easiest way to have risk adversity is going to be looking at the more established tokens, Decentraland, Sandbox, even though the upside might not be a hundred or a thousand X in the next few years, you're still going to be able to find yourself making money in this market. And I think that's just what a lot of people care about right now. All right. So for the next category of cryptocurrencies that I plan on investing into now are going to be the exchange and platform related cryptos like Binance, Crypto.com, and even FTX. All right. So the reason why I picked those three cryptocurrencies within the category of different exchanges is because if we do plan on expecting the worst, if we do plan on seeing a recession or an economic period of downturn, I do believe the exchanges are going to be holding strong and there's almost little to zero chance that they would ever go completely completely under. And if we are in a prolonged period of a, another crypto winter or a little bit of frostiness, just in the worst case scenario, I do know because of how much real estate, because of how much they've expanded in the physical world. So to give you some better examples of some of those physical real estate properties that a lot of these crypto exchanges have even built alongside all the partnerships that they have with huge celebrities, check out FTX. Look, so they have a Nikki Jam concert coming up. They have a Tyler, the creator concert. They have established themselves as a full arena and they are also home to the NBA Miami Heat as well. Miami Heat, right? Miami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't watch basketball all that much, I'll be honest. Another example of this is going to be the Crypto.com Arena. If you guys have been following along, you guys have definitely heard of this arena and just what they've been planning to do. You'll notice that they even have things like the Super Bowl uh, Music Fest going on and just getting the licensing to that name is a huge deal because, because now you're associating them with real life partners. You're associating them with teams, games, and different huge entities that have established themselves in the space. So Binance is currently sitting at $386 today, coming from an all-time high of almost $700 before. So that's about a 50% discount you're getting from the previous all-time high, which we experienced last year. Now, another crypto on this list is going to be crypto.com. This is coming from the stadium news. This is coming from their main launch and just a lot of the hype that we experienced earlier last year before it started to come down in price. Uh, right now, what you guys are seeing with crypto.com is actually a little bit more green today in the market, coming down from 38 cents all the way up to uh, 41 cents where it's currently at right now. And this is actually because of a 
another partnership, and this is with the King James Foundation, otherwise with our boy LeBron James, and they stated, together, we're increasing educational and workforce development while delivering the tools and access that will empower the next generation to build a better and more inclusive future. Whenever we get news like this, obviously it does help the price of these cryptocurrencies because we're getting more awareness, but most importantly, if you look at the tokenomics and how crypto.com actually functions uh, as a project, as a company, as an exchange, you'll notice that they do have a lot of unique features. So back in the old days, uh, before they had their CRO token, you still had to natively stake your crypto in order to get their benefits, in order to get access to things like their crypto.com metal visa card. Uh, doing this, you have a staking period, which allows people to continue putting money into these apps while still getting additional benefits using some of their products. Another example of one of these exchange cryptocurrencies, which I mentioned in yesterday's video, is FTX, which also raised a new round of money, getting about $400 million in external funding, which puts them at a valuation of $8 billion. Now, I do understand that the company valuation and the token valuation may not always be one-to-one. -one. FTX market cap right now is actually at $5.3 billion. And even based on articles like this, where you see arbitrage and you know that, hey, they're still going to be around, they're still doing amazing things, and they're still expanding their ecosystem. Just quick right here, why FTX is uniquely good and hard to replicate. They have a live product, they have liquidity, they have domain expertise, they have pioneering new products, they have a strong reputation, they have fast development circles, and much more. FTX currently at the time of filming this video did have a huge peak leading up to a rally of over $76 uh, back during the fourth quarter of this year, and now currently sitting at $38.94 at the time of filming this video. Uh, they're still in the red in the last seven days. I think this still plays into the fact that we are not seeing the effects of decoupling in the market, meaning all coins are not separating from the price action of Bitcoin, which is still related to other speculative markets, other stocks, uh, and the S&P 500. So with all that being said, I think if we are seeing opportunity and these companies are raising money, they're raising funds, the idea that they are still not going up in price and everything is just going down because Bitcoin's going down, it just is a no brainer right there. I think positions like this where companies are good, the utility is really there. They can only be suppressed so long. And once we get any bit of further momentum, the real value of these companies are going to start showing. And if you do have positions now and you are able to make those gains back, that is when you're going to be happy. Loss aversion goes down the drain and we have that mentality or the crypto fear and greed index going back into green. And we're back to where we were before the start of this year. All right. So for the third category of cryptocurrencies, it's going to be NFTs. Obviously, NFTs are still going up in price. Even most recently, we had Jimmy Fallon talk on The Tonight Show about his board ape along alongside many other celebrities that are continuing to buy into a lot of these digital JPEGs. Even most recently, MasterCard went ahead and striked a deal for NFT payments with Coinbase amid all the crypto partnerships we are experiencing about two weeks into January. What this year is gonna do is allow easier accessibility for a lot of people who aren't even watching content like this, like crypto videos, for them to be able to buy NFTs a lot easier. And I do believe when we get to that point, we're gonna be seeing another surge in this market too. All right, so you might be asking yourself the question, well, Brian, if NFTs are going to continue to blow up, how can I prepare this? Well, you can invest into the NFTs themselves that you think are going to go up in value, or you can still invest into a lot of these crypto projects and make it a bit easier for yourself. Now, this chart right here is a little outdated. It's from back in October, but they do a really good job at having illustrations to show us exactly the growth that we've seen. This pie chart is exactly what I want you guys to look at and notice that Ethereum is still a large player in the space. Even though we have many other protocols, which are known to be the Ethereum killer, Killers. In reality, you also have to keep in mind, nothing will ever kill Ethereum. Ethereum still has way too many applications on there for them to ever become irrelevant. The whole principle I want you to focus on is the growth here. So DeFi Llama is gonna give us a more better accurate picture of what's going on real time. We're still seeing money. We're still seeing that enormous growth going into a lot of the different applications and protocols listed on the market. Now, Ethereum is having some liquidations during this time. And this is what I see as a good buying opportunity, never to buy at different peaks like this. If you guys watch my video that I uploaded yesterday with regards to the bear market, you'll know that corrections are also very healthy. And these are times where you want to consider putting those positions in. So if we take a look at some of the growth of Ethereum and Ethereum related killers that host a lot of these NFT projects, you'll notice that we did experience huge amounts of growth. So Ethereum was up 548% in the last year of 2021. We had Solana up 11,962%. We still had great growth coming from Cardano back when they're still at $1.50. 
Bitcoin at 807% and even other cryptos like Polkadot up 353%. So if you're also a believer that NFTs are going to do very well this year, make sure that you have positions loaded up. We mentioned Ethereum before and anytime they go under the support level of $2,000, that's a clear buy for me. Uh, Ethereum has been very easy to track in terms of swing trades just because they still do follow Bitcoin pretty closely and the support and resistance levels for Ethereum. Even if you're not a TA guy, you're still able to look at the charts and be like, okay, I can kind of see a little bit of an indication right here on entry. Uh, Solana has obviously been doing well and I do know that Solana still plans to have major updates coming out. A lot of these projects still have their own little glitches, their little funks, but I think over time we're going to be seeing a lot of those getting cleared out. Uh, so Solana, if Cardano continues to make improvements and we do see better use case within their protocols as well, we can definitely see them increasing price throughout this year. Uh, in terms of other cryptocurrencies, Polkadot obviously has a much lower market cap, so possibly a higher return. And if we take a look at that last one year percentage gainer, you'll notice that they had the least amount of gains out of all the different cryptos listed. Uh, but in addition to that, we have AVAX too. And I think a lot of these cryptos are still going to enable you to make good returns if Bitcoin continues to even just hold these levels. Uh, but if Bitcoin goes up in price, we could definitely see a lot of exponential growth in having these altcoins as well. So at this point in the video, we've pretty much covered three different categories of cryptos. And I've explained to you why I would load up positions there compared to other projects listed on the market. But for the fourth one, I do want to have a more conservative bet just in case you are a newer investor and you really hate losing money or you are afraid of any type of downside. This is where investing into a lot of the high caps or even considering stable coins is not a bad decision to make at all. In addition to that, if you want to play even more conservatively, you can look into other cryptocurrencies that allow you to earn interest by staking them or finding yourself able to make additional yield uh, just by having them on a certain app. Outside of finding yourself making astronomical gains in terms of percentages, you can also find yourself making really good yields and still almost negating that risk completely. One of the clear benefits of being into crypto versus your traditional savings account is that you can still find yourself earning anywhere from six to 12% on your stable coins through many different exchanges or protocols or just apps that you can have access to very easily. A 7% yield interest is unheard of within traditional finance markets. If you guys have ever used a savings account, oftentimes you won't even get 1% back on the money you're saving with that bank. The cool thing with crypto too is oftentimes they have no minimum investing amount. You could just stake $100 and find yourself still earning additional yield. If you're staking Ethereum or a lot of the other larger coins, you can find yourself making both the gains and the amount of interest. So it's like a double whammy right there for you to continue making income as well. Most of the times you can also have low or minimum lockup periods uh, where in comparison to savings accounts, sometimes they limit on how many times you could actually withdraw those funds. Uh, I know with, as an example, crypto.com, if I were to get one of their Visa metal debit cards, you can choose how long to stake that amount for. And if you stake it longer where you can't have access to it, they'll actually allow you to earn more interest the longer it is in with their project. All right. So if you guys are watching this video till the end, I hope you're able to find a lot of good value in this video on how to invest into the markets during this time. Make sure that you are level-headed. Make sure you do your full research, expand your knowledge and understand these projects and why you are investing into them. If you have been paying attention, you should have a clear idea on what those top cryptocurrencies are and maybe even the split of that portfolio pie of what you should have moving forward to this year. Like always, if you did enjoy this video, we always do a code word uh, towards the end. And for that, we're just going to do brush. Comment down below brush if you guys are watching this all the way till the end. Big shout out to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's episode. And thank you guys for just watching these videos, supporting the content and just being so supportive. I just have such amazing supporting fans. I feel like I don't say that enough, but I just want to let you guys know how much I appreciate y'all. Also, in addition to that, don't forget to check out my Patreon listed down below in the description. If you guys want to get to know me a little bit better, even in addition to all the social media, if you want to ever have conversations with me, uh, that's where the best opportunity is created for that. You can have a chance of what I'm looking at, the research I'm doing, my portfolios, and how I plan to invest for this year as well. With all that being said, you guys, thank you all so much. Have an amazing weekend, and I will talk to y'all soon. Peace.